Hey guys, so I've had a bunch of people ask me how do you add additional sounds into the Complete Worship Bundle. Um, and I've got how to do this kind of scattered throughout my YouTube channel in a lot of different videos. But in this video, I'm going to pull all that information into one video and then just give you these additional um, YouTube links. Before we get started, I'll just uh, highlight these two products, the Ultimate Main Stage Collection 5 and the Ultimate Main Stage Collection 4. The reason being that these have bonus multis for the Complete Worship Bundle. So it's just a simple drag and drop file that you drag into the Complete Worship Bundle. And this one adds 15 bonus multis. And this one here um, adds seven bonus song specific multis from the There Is More album. Um, the thing with these is you don't have to worry about copying and pasting and importing and mapping sliders. Um, it's already done for you. Um, like I said, it's just a single file that you drag and drop and it's set up um, ready to go. Um, so those are options if you want to add extra sounds to the complete worship bundle but don't want to do um, the process of having to import them manually. Um, obviously all my products don't have complete worship bundle expansion packs so I'm going to walk you through how to add sounds from basically any bundle that I've released. Um, so I'm going to use the Complete Worship Bundle Plus, um, but the same principle applies for the Complete Worship Bundle. As you probably already know, the Plus version uses Valhalla Vintage Verb, and the other version just uses uh, Main Stage Reverb. So that's the only difference between the two bundles. Um, we'll start off by showing you how to add additional drones. So if I go to my YouTube channel, and you check out adding new ambient pad drones to the Complete Worship Bundle. Um, that shows you a detailed walkthrough of how to do that. Um, like I said, I'm going to put that link in the description for this video to show you how to do that. It's really simple. I'll do a quick recap though in this video. So the way that um, the ambient pads or ambient drone pads are set up in the Complete Worship Bundle is there's actually two of them. If you look at this drone mix at the top, it's actually blending between two different ambient pads. Um, the Complete Worship Bundle comes with Motion Shimmer ambient pads already pre-installed. So anti-clockwise is the low um, shimmer ambient pad and clockwise is the high shimmer ambient pad. But what it means is you can add um, two different types of um, pad drones into this and mix them with this knob. You can either have one by itself or the other by itself or a mixture of both. So it's really simple. All you need to do, for example, if you wanted to replace the high uh, motion shimmer ambient pads, you just scroll across till you get to C high. You open the playback um, plugin and you either drag and drop a file in there or you can um, add it in by searching for it here, depending on where you've installed it on your computer. So really simple way of um, kind of upgrading the motion shimmer ambient pads um, to something different or a mixture of two different types of ambient pads. So the great thing about all the ambient pad drones that I've created for multi-tracks is they're designed the same way. So they all fade in um, at exactly the same time. So they uh, work really well in tandem. Um, the next thing I'll mention is pianos. So I've already done a video for this one as well. So I'll just quickly highlight that. Um, if you scroll down and go to importing the ultimate piano collection into the complete worship bundle, that shows you how to replace pianos. Um, obviously you don't have to own the ultimate piano collection to um, get information on how to replace the piano, but that uh, video um, just shows you how to do that whether it's a giant that you're replacing it with or another piano that you've purchased. The piano in this bundle is really great for a free piano, um, but there's obviously a lot of other piano options that um, you can replace with. And it's really simple to do that. The great thing about the way I've set up this template is it uses aliases. Um, so there's actually only one piano in this whole template. Um, and all these other 10 patches are actually using an alias to um, get the piano from the top patch. It means there's less RAM, there's less um, CPU load, it means uh, smoother transitions between patches so your piano is not going to cut off or anything when you go to a new patch. Um, so when you're adding and deleting and um, doing changes to the Complete Worship Bundle, just be aware of that. The very top patch is the one that contains a piano. Um, the very top patch here is the one that contains an organ the roads here, um, and the whirly down the bottom. So again, if you want more information, um, that's also on my YouTube channel, um, aliases and how to use them. And towards the end of the video, I show how the aliases work inside the Complete Worship Bundle. 
Okay, so the next part of the video, I'm gonna show you how to add a pad or a lead or a bass sound to the complete worship bundle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the Ultimate Main Stage Collection 2. Um, now this one doesn't come with um, expansion multis for the complete worship bundle, um, but it has a bunch of great sounds. It has official patches used on Young and Free albums, like it's got uh, This Is Living and Alive and a bunch of other sounds that I've used on Hillsong albums as well. So I thought I'd use this as an example. So there's two different types of patches really. There's a single patch, um, like this ARP here, and then there's multi-patches, which have multiple channel strips um, to play the um, sound. So the process is exactly the same for the single as the multi, you just have to repeat the process a few times. So to save time in this video, I'm just gonna show you how to um, copy across a single patch. So for this one, um, it's got an ARP on it, so I thought this would be a good one to copy across. What you need to do is select the channel strip, um, go to the top and go save channel strip setting. Um, I'm just gonna save it. Let's cheat. I do this a little bit sometimes to get it to the top of the list so I can find it easy. Um, everything's in alphabetical order. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is I've done this quite a few times, so now I have to put quite a few stars to get it to the top, but. Um, that's just been my process. Um, so I've saved that channel strip. If you do like the reverb that's also on um, a specific patch, you can um, copy that as well. Um, if there's a lot of um, channel strips, if you double click on the bus send, it'll highlight the bus send. So it makes it really easy to find where the bus is sending um, and what reverb or delay or whatever is on it. So if you wanna, you don't have to do this, um, but if you wanna, um, copy across the reverb or bus settings as well. You can save channel strip setting and save it um, as well. So I'll just do that. So just remember that when you're importing and exporting EXS24 sample based patches, you just have to put the .exs files in a specific location. I've done a video for this one as well, but I'll also put that in the description link. It's importing and exporting main stage patches right there. Um, for those of you who want to know the location um, if you may have forgotten it or haven't watched the video, it's Macintosh hard drive, library, application support, logic, sampler instruments. As you can see here, I've already put the samples and the .exs files in folders in there so that any main stage template or logic template can see them. You don't technically have to put the samples in this location as well. As long as you put the .exs files, um, your computer should be able to find them, but it makes sense to put the samples and the .exs files in the same location, just um, it's better file management, I reckon. Okay, now let's go back to the Complete Worship Bundle. Now because the Complete Worship Bundle and most of my libraries are sample based, um, it just takes a little bit of time to reload those samples into the RAM. Okay, here we go. Now the next thing you're gonna wanna do is work out what patch you wanna add that patch into or what multi you wanna add that patch into. Um, so for this example, I'm just gonna choose Young and Free Multi 1. So I always suggest uh, backing up your product before making any changes and edits, just to be safe. Um, another way you can do it is to duplicate a patch just in case you wanna go back to the original. So I'm gonna do that here. And Command D is the shortcut for duplicating. If you forget what the shortcut is, you can just go to Edit, duplicate and see it there, or actually just click it there. Um, that shows all the shortcuts and just makes things a bit quicker once you learn a few of those. Okay, so I've duplicated that. Um, we can re rename that as edited or whatever you wanna do. Um, the next thing we wanna work out is what is the patch that we're copying across? Is it a lead? Is it a pad? Is it a base? What kind of patch is it? Um, and this one is kind of an up lead, so I wanna put it in the um, lead section. So I'm just gonna widen this to make it a little bit easier. And everything's color coded, so it makes it easy to figure out uh, what's what. So we can see here that the pro lead is kind of an orange color. So we just go to the orange color here. And we can do one or two things. We can either replace what's already there with the patch that we're copying from the Ultimate Main Stage Collection 2, or we can put it next to it and have both of them playing if we wanted to. So I'm gonna, um, show you how to do that and add it in. But the same process is the same for just replacing it. You just literally go to the top of the channel strip 
and go to user channel strip settings and add that one in. But we're going to duplicate it and we're going to add it next to it so we can have both of those lead sounds playing at the same time. Okay, Command D duplicates it. Now there's a duplicate um, channel strip. Um, the next thing we want to do is just go to the top of the channel strip, use the channel strip settings and select that uh, one that we just copied across. Now the first thing I would suggest doing is turning off the low pass filter. So a lot of my libraries have the low pass filter pre-mapped to the mod wheel inside the EXS24 player, but the complete worship bundle has a low pass filter on a bus. So what we need to do is just turn that off and then the mod wheel won't affect the low pass filter. The next thing we want to do is just start mapping some of these um, sliders and buttons so um, you can turn it on and off from this front panel thing here. Um, so let's do the volume first. Now we wouldn't have to remap the volume if we would just replaced it, but we haven't. We've made a duplicate patch. So we need to first highlight the slider that we want to map. Then we go down to this section. Now what we don't want to do is map it on top of what's already there because that will take off the mapping for the pro lead that's already there. So we need to add another um, mapping parameter. Now we need to hit map parameter. You'll see this um, kind of pulsing red which means the next thing that we touch will be automatically mapped to that. So let's go over here. Just click on the slider or you can move it up and down. Um, now that it's done that, it's mapped it and we just want to make the save value 0 and the max range 0. You can always check the duplicate patch if you want to know um, what those values should be. They should be um, 0, 0, but some of them um, by default are a little bit less. So just use that as a reference. Okay, um, now you'll be able to see when I move the volume here, both of these channel strips are moving, so that's all done. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to map the ARP to that ARP bypass. So same principle applies. There's already one map there, so I'm going to add another mapping parameter. Hit map parameter. The next thing I touch is going to map to that button. Okay, so that's done. And I just want to make sure that this one is identical to this one. So as you can see, inverted parameter range has been ticked. So I'm going to do the same for that. And that's all done. Now, if you want the ARP to be on by default and not bypassed by default, just change these two settings here um, to the triple dash thing. And that just means when you go to that patch, it'll be on by default. Um, so that's that. And in addition to mapping the ARP button, you can also map the EXS24 bypass button, which is the pro lead just above the ARP. And that's exactly the same process as what I showed you for the ARP. So I'll just skip over that. Um, if you're adding another patch that has, let's say, the chord trigger or anything um, on it and you're wanting to put it next to it, I suggest just copying and pasting it across. So you can just do this. You hold the um, option button on your keyboard as you drag it across and it does this copying thing. Um, so that's an easy way of kind of copying stuff across. So use the patch that you've duplicated. I've just done undone that because I don't want that chord trigger on that metronome. Um, just use the patch that you've duplicated as a reference. Um, that's the best way of doing it. So that's basically set up now. Um, other things that we might want to check is let's make sure that these ARP settings are exactly the same. So in the one that I copied across, um, it has an octave range of two, not one. So we could make both of them two or both of them one. It doesn't really matter. Um, you could even have one different to the other one, but I'd suggest just making them the same. Um, the other thing you could do is rename that. You could um, rename this if you wanted to, to um, lead combination or whatever you want. Same with the volume, just to make it a little bit easier to tell what's on that. Um, but that's basically it. Um, you could add that reverb that I showed in the um, Ultimate Main Stage Collection 2 um, by just putting it on whatever bus you wanted to. You could select bus 50 if you wanted to, um, add some of that onto it, double click so it goes to it, and then just go, uh, where is it, user channel strip settings and put whatever reverb you saved, I think it was Shimmer 3, um, onto that. Now it'll have the exact same reverb, but you don't have to do that. Um, let's just undo that. That's Command Z if you're wondering. 
Um, go back to this one. Just undid that. And what you could do is just copy the reverb that's already on the previous one that we're using as a reference. So again, hold Option down and drag and drop. Now we've got the same reverb that was on that one. Um, another thing you could do is have the same delays. So you could take the delay from that one and replace it with that. Or if you like the delay from this one, you could replace it with that. It's really up to you. Um, and every situation is different depending on what patch you're copying across and if you're wanting to replace it or add it um, to the template. But that's basically how it works. So what I'll do, I'll just bypass these for now and just play um, the pro lead now so you can hear both of them working. Um, the last thing that you might want to look at is where the patch is mapped across the keyboard. Um, you can obviously have each channel strip mapped to a different section of the um, keyboard. And to do that, the easiest way is just select the channel strip, um, learn high note, or sorry, learn low note, and learn high note. And you could do the same for the other ARP if you wanted to. Learn low, learn high. And now the ARP will only play in this specific section here. So that's something that you, you can work out and you can have just ARPs at the top of your keyboard and pads below. Um, you can basically set it up however you want. So like I said before, if you want to add a combination patch into the Complete Worship Bundle, you just have to take those steps and just repeat them a few times to add the extra sounds in. Um, so yeah, that's how you add sounds into the Complete Worship Bundle. Like I said before, I'm going to add links to all those videos I referenced in the description of this video as well. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.